Welcome back to Godot 101. This is part 10. And in this video, we're going to continue talking about physics and collisions and using a new node called the Raycast. All right, let's get started. So we have our player, and they can run around. Uh, and the next logical step would be to make them able to jump. But there's a few things you've got to take into account when you're going to implement jumping, and they may not be obvious right away. So let's take a look at it. Now we could add a jump speed, define the jump speed here to be, let's make this, let's try negative 1500, All right? So that's going to be negative because we want it to be upwards. And we could just go down here and just like we're doing with the UI right and UI left, we could add a check there to see if we want to jump upwards, right? We could say something like if is action pressed UI up and we just set the velocity equal to jump speed but there's gonna be a couple of issues with that so let's take a look right if I'm, I'm gonna tap the up key well, I jumped up right but if I hold down the up key I'm gonna keep jumping constantly right my velocity is always going to be pointing upwards until I let go of the key and if you're trying to do a Flappy Bird style game, you know, that might be what you want to do, that you can keep jumping in midair, but we only want to be able to jump if we're standing on the ground. We also don't want the jump to continue to happen every time we're, as long as we're holding it down, right? We want to only jump once when we tap it once. So first let's talk about only allowing jumping when you're standing on a platform. And there's two main approaches to this. One really common one is to have a flag, something like can jump, right? And that can be a Boolean. And you go down here and when you're when you collide with the ground, you set can jump to true. And when you press the key, you only allow it if can jump is true. And when you do jump, you set it to false. So now you can't jump again until you hit the ground and it goes back to true. And that's that's one common way to approach it. But we're not going to do it that way. We're going to use a node. So I'm going to go over to my player here. And we're going to add a new node to this called a Raycast2D. And I'm just going to call this, I'm going to name this the Let's call it the ground ray. And it might be a little hard to see. I'm going to hide the collision there so you can see it. So you can see now we have a this little blue arrow pointing downwards. And that is a ray cast. And it the purpose of a ray cast is it'll tell you if it collides with something. So it's basically going to like a collision shape, except it just tells you if it hits something and it only points in one certain direction. So pointing downwards is what we want, but we do want to move it a little bit. All right, we want to make it uh, lower down. So let's shift it down about 50 pixels. And then we also want it to, this right here, cast two is how long it is. I don't need it to be that long, so we're going to put uh, 20 in there. So it just projects below their feet. So when you're standing on the ground, this Raycast node is going to detect a collision. When you're in the air, it will not because there's nothing there. And these are super useful little nodes. You know, you can um, you definitely want to enable it here. Don't forget to do that. Uh, you can set it to only detect certain types of nodes, so it'll only detect, you know, uh, static bodies, and that way it would work on on platforms, but not on you know other characters or whatever, things like that. And we're also going to talk about what this layer mask thing means uh, in just a little bit. But let's just check this out and get it working, okay? Over to our script, we are first going to just give ourselves a reference to that ground ray node. So we don't have to type git node all the time. 
and then to make this a little easier to see I'm going to set my jump speed to a lot a lot smaller so we don't jump nearly as high just so we can see the effect better and then we're going to go here to where we check for the input and we're going to say if action pressed and the ground ray is colliding then we'll set the jump speed so let's take a look at that so now when I press the arrow key I jump up but if I hold it down you can see I don't jump again until I hit the ground again and that collision is happening so that's pretty good but I don't like the repeated jumping when I hold the arrow down right I want to have to press the key again to get another jump well to do that we need to do this input detection a little different so right now what's happening is we're in the fixed process function so this is happening every frame so every frame it checks this and and does it but instead we want to use a different function so we're going to set process input to true and that means we can define a function called input this one and now this function will trigger every time an event happens and it will pass the event in to it so we're going to take that yeah we're going to put that in here and instead of saying input we're going to put event so if the event that happens that triggers this function is that then we will do it and as you can see that will solve our repeated jumping problems I'm holding the arrow key down now if I let go and tap it again I will jump again so I can do it as often as I want but I have to press the key again to get another jump Okay, so let's crank that jump speed back up again. Maybe not quite as high. And let's look at our main scene. We have our platform here, right? I'm going to duplicate that and add another platform over something about there. Is that taller than the... Oh, yeah, I just want to make sure we have room to fit. And you can see we should be able to jump up and get on that platform just as well right and if we're underneath we can't jump we're gonna bonk our head what if we wanted it to work a little differently and have our player jump up through the platform and then land on the top okay let's go over to our platform and over here in the physics body 2d section you see the one-way collider options and here is where we want to set these properties direction is what direction you want to make the collisions happen so we want to happen we want to hit the top of the platform that means we're when bodies are moving downwards so that means we want to put this a direction a direction vector pointing downwards and then we have max depth that is how far the body can penetrate into this before it snaps up to the top right and counts as a as hitting it on the top and that let's just set this to 16. we right now have a 32 height here so that would be half the height so if we run our code now we should see we jump up and we land on top perfect except you might notice that we are going behind the platform so let's just go to the player and if we go to its z property we just set that to one and that will make sure that the player gets drawn on top of the platform much better Okay. And one last thing we can do with the jump is we can set a minimum jumping speed. And what that is going to let us do, let's set that to about the same minus 500. And what that's going to let us do is if you hold the jump key down, you're going to get a full jump. But if you just tap it and let go quickly, you're going to jump a shorter distance. So in our input, 
we want to look for the event is action released. Okay, also on UI up. And if that happens, we need to check what our y velocity is. If it's less than min jump, then we're going to set it equal to min jump. And what that that's going to allow us to do is give a little tap and see I can do a, a short jump. But if I hold it down, I'll do the full jump up. And if you want to do this a different way, you could also get the same effect by using the clamp function and clamping the y velocity to either min jump or whatever it is. And that'll give you the same effect. Okay, that's going to do it for this lesson. Hopefully you can see how useful these raycasts are. Uh, you can imagine if you're doing, you want to do wall detection, you could have them pointing out in front or behind of the player. Uh, they can be used for bullets. If you're use, doing a shooter game where you want really high speed bullets, you really just project one of these outwards from the player and if it hits something, then you hit it with the bullet. Um, and you know you can point these in whatever direction and get all sorts of different effects with them. They're super useful, and you'll see we're going to use them for other things as time goes on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.